so today I'm going to talk to you guys about a not quite very ordinary hobby and some life lessons it, it provided for me and see if we can get a challenge for you out there. Uh, as a kid, I grew up in the Netherlands, uh, played soccer as long as it was light. I played it about three to four hours a day and then it gets winter and then soccer is not an option anymore. And we went, uh, I, I went to play Lego. So here's some of uh, my favorite train sets. Uh, this, this little train set, I, I got it when I was six years old, my fire engine, and my moon landing. And the moon landing set, it seems ancient history to you guys, but when I was a kid, this had actually just happened. So this was like a very accurate and, and up-to-date set. Um, <laughs> then other things started to happen. Started to go to college, girls, parties, beer. So Lego was really not in the top ten anymore. <laughs> Oh, I think this is, uh, yeah. So then I became an adult Lego fan. So what my family thinks I do is I'm a hoarder. Uh, that's probably the next show I'm going to be on. Uh, but I'm a, a pretty organized hoarder. My friends think I'm just building like they're used to build. So I take a green and a yellow one and make a boat. Um, <laughs> however, in, with, with a couple of friends, we founded a, a Lego club and we actually make Look, skyscrapers, trains, and we, we run up shows. So that's what society thinks I do. This is what the government thinks I do. Uh, every, every time I order bricks from Germany or from Brazil, the package gets ripped open by customs. They look at what is in it, and eventually it gets to me. But they think I'm building something I shouldn't be building. Uh, then this is what I think I do. I think I'm a real cool builder. I'm an architect. I'm an artist. And I built uh, some, like a professional artist here, built like the, the new uh, Yankee Stadium. What I actually do is depicted here. I spend my time, 90% of the time, just sorting. Because uh, I, need, I need to get whatever that brick, and it's at the bottom of the pile, and I'm digging it out and, and getting it. So why? Uh, why do I have this hobby? People ask me, like, why do you do that? So I said, well, wrong question. Why not? So this hobby keeps me at home. I'm not playing golf. I'm not going to strip clubs, bars. So my wife knows where I am. My kids know where I am. My kids can enjoy the hobby with me. So in uh, 2003, I, I was um, in my early 30s, and I thought, hey, let's build something cool. So this is the first thing I built, was the church from my hometown in the Netherlands. So it's just a, the church. I've always liked it. I'm not a very religious person, but just the architecture I've always liked. So I went in Columbus and then uh, decided uh, to build some Columbus skyscrapers. So if we had shows with people, we'd come back together with some of my friends. I said, this one is not built by me. This is built by John Busey, a friend of mine. I built the other three. So then we take some little buildings, and it actually looks pretty cool. So it's not these, these multicolored airplanes and uh, like a couple of slides back. Uh, <laughs> Then I decided something more architectural, so a little bit more of a challenge. This is a seven foot tall, seven foot wide arch in St. Louis without glue, uh, so I can stand under there. And uh, so not only uh, do I like to build things that we already have, I like to build some fantasy things so you can really uh, build something you like. So rather than building something from a plan, uh, you can have writer's block or builder's block when you build something fantasy. So this is a, what I think is like a medieval town hall. Uh, then the Lego company started to notice Lego is not just for kids anymore. And uh, they invited, uh, they had a national competition, an international competition. They invited 70 people over to come to Washington, D.C. and display their building skills. So I built, uh, for the Build a Trust Challenge, I built a Drayden Hall. It's a, a, a plantation house in South Carolina. And uh, I, I did win the challenge. So I was very happy with that. Then in, in so in 2008, I built McDonald's. It's right there. Uh, every time we have a show, the kids go, look, McDonald's, look, McDonald's. And, and this five by five foot Ohio State house is like completely forgotten. <laughs> Unless I put like a little Spider-Man on there. Then, then all the kids, they, they see it again. So where do I find the time to do this? Uh, People tell me, like, oh, you spend thousands of hours. Where's the time? Well, this is what my peers do. I'm employed. Uh, I'm a professor here at Ohio State. I have an advanced degree. I have family, three kids. In this age group, or actually all the way at the end of this age group, <laughs> and 30.8 uh, hours a week, adults like me spend at leisure activities. And that can be just enjoying yard work, uh, going to the gym, uh, and mainly watching TV. 16 hours a week is spent watched on TV by, by adults. In your age group, uh, it's a little bit less, but not much less, believe me. Oh. Um, 
I have to go oops, one forward. There's something missing here. So what I, how I find time is two things. I cut TV watching in half. So I only watch TV uh, Saturday Night Live. I, I, I watch that. And then uh, <laughs> Ohio State basketball games, Ohio State football games, and one or two sitcoms. But that's only like four to five hours a week. So I gain eight hours a week. I also have made a habit of getting up whenever I'm awake. And I do that every single day. I typically get to work at 6 o'clock. So I get up at 5, and I've just maintained the habit in the weekend. I get up at 5, my family sleeps till 9, so I have 8 hours every weekend. I can do with whatever I want without interfering with family life. So that's what I did with my time. So then I needed a new challenge, and in July 2009, I started building on Ohio Stadium. So I thought it would be, uh, would be neat. So first I built a hull. And here you see the field, and if, for those of you that are really football fans, you see the end zones here are green. And of course, I just finished the football field, and about two weeks later, they put AstroTurf in, and the end zones are red. <laughs> uh, so I knew I had to change that. I would never hear the end of it. Uh, so um, then I changed the end zones to red, and here's like a couple months later, I'm building. I use all the, the blue and yellow bricks so they can't be seen, which, which I think is, is very good. Um, and then I, I learned another life lessons, uh, uh, lesson about a couple of months later. I built the upper sea deck here uh, for about two to three weeks. I was doing a couple hours a week, and I built a sea deck. And I noticed uh, from, the, from the plans, and the plans is actually just pictures I took, I noticed for every two bricks I go in one direction, I need to go four and a half up. But LEGO doesn't make half bricks. So what I have to do, I have to decide. For every two this way, I go either four up or five. So I try to save money and be lazy, so I said four. Four is enough. Um, and then I built this, and I was building it. And as I was building it, every time it was nagging me, like, this doesn't look quite right. I go to the football games myself. I sit on C deck. And when I sit on C deck, it's like, it's pretty steep. So I figured it had to be steeper. And I learned a life lesson. If you can correct a mistake that you know will haunt you for the rest of the life, of your life, do correct it. Because I was, I, honestly, I'm so happy I tore this whole section down. I was, I was happy tearing it down because I knew it was going to look better. I knew I was going to be happy for the rest of my life. <laughs> These are the south stands I was building a couple of months later. So I, I'm building them inside out so I don't have to crawl under the table every, every time. And uh, this, it started to take shape in August 2010, a year down the road. I already put all the benches in. And here, still, the scoreboard was missing. In September uh, 2010, uh, I was uh, finished the scoreboard. I was here building at the press box. So it really went uh, pretty well. Um, here, I spent a lot of time doing this scoreboard. Um, this scoreboard took me as much as the entire South Stands in, in, in amount of time, because I had to put all these details in, and here a recurring building theme uh, <laughs> that uh, just figured I had, to, I had to throw in something there. I still have not gotten a free meal uh, out of this. <laughs> uh, but this was a, a very nice building challenge. You have all these things and put them upside down, and it took me a long while to get this done. And here uh, was the press box, and this was uh, getting to the, to the end. So here's the press box from a field view of stand. And here's some details. And uh, so this is the speaker cluster that's on top of the south scoreboard. I built a flag uh, scoreboard. And here you see the, this, this curvature I got uh, the way I wanted. This was the hardest part of the stadium. The blicks, bricks were all square, and uh, was a semi-dome I had to somehow fill with square bricks to make it still look like a dome. So uh, this took me a lot of design. Uh, three or four times I built the whole thing, tore it down, I wasn't happy. And in the end, I, I got it done. Then on January 2008, I finished it. I put a couple of pictures online, told my friends, hey, go look. I finished it, because my friends noticed I was building it. And um, <laughs> the Columbus Dispatch somehow got hold of it. They asked, can we, can we come, do an article on you? I said, yeah. You can come, shoot some pictures. So they, they came, shot some pictures. And it was a very slow news day the next day. So on a Saturday, I didn't know, but the dispatch has a rule that if, it's a, if, if there's a positive story, the first story on the Saturday morning edition has to be a positive story to start off your weekend good. So they thought this was a positive story. So now we had two people thinking this was a positive idea. <laughs> um, and, then, and then the Associated Press uh, Somehow, it was a slow news day all around. So the Associated Press put it in one of their top 10 stories coming out of the US that day. 
Uh, and then it, uh, I got phone calls from everywhere. It was like 230 papers, ESPN magazine, CNN. They all came and, and, and took pictures. So I want to share with you what happened after that. Uh, online, if you put a picture online, you expose yourself. And there's a lot of comments that get back. So the fun part is that 90% of the comments posted online, if you blog or write something, are negative. So I'm very happy that 70% in my case was only negative. So, uh, so I got 70% negative comments, and I'll share a few with you today. One, is that his mom's basement? <laughs> my basement. Well, let me rephrase that. The banks and a little bit of me. So I don't know what's more impressive, that he actually made this or that the dude is married. Well, I've been married 15 years last Thursday, so that went well. Still looks like a giant toilet bowl coming from the state up north. So I told him, have you looked at your own stadium? His next project, kiss a girl. It's like, refer to my 15-year marriage, yes, I have. <laughs> now, the top one comment wasn't actually online. I got a physical letter in the mail with a stamp from a 12-year-old boy, and it, he asked me the following. Can I have a picture, like in the paper, but without you in it? <laughs> so I did that. So this is my last slide. What's the message? I have a message. What can you do? Cut TV watching in half. So pick a couple of good shows, pick a couple of good games, don't watch, don't just flick to watch for the heck of watching. Get up when awake. I'm a professor of physiology, I can tell you, once you're awake, that just laying there and nice and cozy for another 30 seconds, not going to help you. <laughs> uh, I gain 500 hours a year, 500 hours a year. Now, I did it for me, I didn't build it for anyone, I just did it for me, and I loved it. So these two things combined give me motivation. So what can you do? when you have motivation and 500 hours a year. I don't know, but you'll be telling us here in a couple of years. Go do it.